Hi, in this video I'll show you how to turn a curve object into barbed wire with Blender geometry nodes. So first I've deleted the things I don't need and added geometry nodes to my default cube. Then I added the spiral as a base for our barbed wire. And next we need a curve to mesh node to extrude another curve along our base curve. So most barbed wire is made out of two twisted wires on which these spikes, which are basically spirals, are placed. The basic idea here is to turn our curve into two parallel running curves, which we later can solidify. And because the curve to mesh node only accepts curves as a profile input, we have to use a little workaround where we create two points, which are essentially curve objects, and use these for the profile input. I do this by using another line curve, delete the endpoint, so I'm left with only a single point, and instance it on the first line. After realizing the instances, we see that the extrusion now works as expected. If we instance our points on a circle instead of a line, you can see that we have these strands which are placed circular around our base curve. But for our example we only need two, so I use a line instead. Here I use an instance on points node on which we later instance our spikes. For visualization purposes I use a cube for now. To control the amount of instances, I use a curve to points node and set it to length. To display the cubes and our curve simultaneously, I use a joint geometry node. With a proximity node, I control the radius of our curve based on the distance to the points on which I instance our spikes. Don't forget to set the geometry proximity node to points. With a map range node, we can set the minimum and the maximum radius. Here I use a resample curve node to give our input curve a higher resolution. Optionally, we can set the map range node to a smooth step to give our curve a more smooth look. Then we use the value which defines the distance between our instances, multiply it by 0.5 and plug it in the from max value of the map range node. Now the remapping scales nicely with the distance of our instances. To twist our wires I use the set curve tilt node and a spline parameter node and then I plug the factor in the tilt input and multiply it with an intensity value. To create the spikes I use a curve spiral with a uniform radius. And on the endpoints of the spiral I'll instance two lines. To orient these points in the correct direction, I use a sample curve node and an align to vector node and use this as the input for our rotation on the instance on points node. Now you can see that only one line segment is oriented in the right direction. One way to fix this is to subtract 0.5 from our curve factor, essentially remapping it in the range of negative 0.5 to positive 0.5. Then we use signum, which returns minus 1 for negative and 1 for positive values. Now we multiply our tangent vector with this and our instances should be rotated correctly. Here I use the set position node and the vector rotate node to essentially create a copy of our spiral and rotate it 180 degrees on its z axis. Here I have to realize the instances because they weren't rotated correctly. 
Now I draw in the original and the copy and we are left with two interwinded spirals. Now we can instance these spirals on our base curve. Here you can see that the center of the spirals is a little bit off, so we have to go back in our setup and offset its Z position to half of its height. For the rotation of our instances, we use the rotation output of our curve to points node. To finally solidify our curves, I realized these instances and then I use a curve to mesh node. And here we can see a little problem. That's because our two main strands are still a mesh. So we have to convert them to a curve first. And now we can use a curve circle for the profile curve of our curve to mesh node. To close the ends of our spikes, simply toggle fill caps. Now there is still an issue, which isn't apparent, but which can cause problems later on. To visualize it, I use a mesh island node and a random value node and create an attribute, which we can display in our shader. So here I take the attribute, set the name correctly, and then you can see when we switch to rendered viewport, that the meshes of our spike instance are still separated. So to unite them, we have to convert our curve back to a mesh and then we can merge this mesh together, which doesn't work with a curve, unfortunately. And then we convert this mesh back to a curve again. If we inspect the result again, we can see that we now have nice clean meshes. Here I delete the attribute because I only needed it for debugging purposes. Now all it's left to do is to create a material. Here I use a principled PSDF shader, set it to metallic and then I switch to the world shader to create a background. And for this I use a noise texture, I use a color ramp to increase the contrast a little bit. Then I adjust the scale and the mapping to have nice reflections in my material. And to exclude the background from getting rendered in the camera, I duplicate the background node, use the mix shader node and use the is camera ray as the factor. So now the noise texture only affects our material and not the world background that gets rendered in the camera. To test the setup, instead of using the spiral, I use a text object. And here you can see some problems appear, like our instances of the spikes are not oriented correctly and the twisting doesn't happen uniformly. So to fix the twisting issue, we can simply use the length instead of the factor to control the twist. Now to show the problem with the orientation of our instances, I simply instanced a cube on every point of our curve mesh and here we can see that some segments have very few points and this leads to issues with the curve to points nodes which samples the curve to get the rotation right. So the simple fix is to take the already resampled curve with the high resolution and plug it in the curve to points node. And now everything should work as expected.
So yeah, that's it for today. I hope you liked this video. And if you like, you can download the setup on my Gumroad page. I've put the link down below and see you next time.